We begin with the breaking news of today. Rahaf al Kunun, the Saudi teenager who waged a social media campaign to flee her country and escape her family. Well, she's now in Canada. She was welcomed by the Foreign Affairs Minister, Chrystia Freeland. Rahaf wanted Canadians to see that she's arrived at her new home. That she's arrived at her new home, but she's had a very long and tiring journey, and so she would prefer not to take questions today. So please respect her. She's a very brave young woman who's been through a lot, and she is now going to go to her new home, and then I'll come out and say a few words. Alkanoon arrived at Pearson International just uh, a few, just a little while ago in Toronto after an overnight flight from South Korea. Canada granting her refugee status at the request of the United Nations. She says she was abused at home and feared for her life after renouncing Islam. She was on her way to Australia when her passport was taken away in Thailand. She barricaded herself in a hotel room and used social media to appeal for help. Her tweets and her plight went viral and she eventually got her passport back. Well, as we say, she just arrived at Pearson International. That's where we find the CBC's Lorenda Redekop right now. So, Lorenda, nice to see you. Uh, describe the situation there this morning. Well, it was just an absolute crush of reporters and camera people, everybody wanting to see this young woman who has gained so much attention online from people all around the world, following her plight with that Twitter hashtag that really took off. It was Save Rahaf. So everybody wanting to see this young woman and also hear from her, possibly. In the end, though, as you said, we did not hear anything from her. She walked out of those doors that all the cameras had had their lenses trained on, and she walked out with the foreign affairs minister who did speak. Take a listen to Christia Freeland. It was Rahaf's uh, choice uh, to come out uh, and say hello to Canadians. She wanted Canadians to see that she's here that she's well and that she's very, very happy to be in her new home. Although she did comment to me about the cold, uh, I told her it does get warmer. Interesting to see that she came out of those doors wearing a Canada hoodie. Also, that's a mini dress that she was wearing underneath that hoodie, something that uh, certainly wouldn't be allowed in Saudi Arabia. And one of the questions that Christia Freeland did not answer, that she was asked repeatedly later when she came out to answer questions from reporters, she didn't answer how this could all affect the relationship with Saudi Arabia, uh, which has been strained, but she chose not to answer that. Choosing not to answer it, although as we heard from her, Rahaf was the one to choose to come out to uh, essentially show herself to uh, Canadians to, to, to basically say she has uh, in fact arrived in this country. Now we did not hear from her as you say, but what is ahead for Rahaf now? Well, she will have to get the help of settlement officials. There were some officials here from uh, the UN High Commission for Refugees to meet her as well. So we know that she will be learning about life in Canada and meeting with settlement officials. And we do hope to hear from her, but it won't be just yet. We were thinking she may speak, though, because she has been so open through that Twitter account, sending not only messages, and pictures but also videos so not hearing from her just yet but we imagine that will be happening soon and of course we'll have it right here on CBC News Network as soon as we hear from Rahaf Lorenda thank you for this our Lorenda Redekop at Pearson International in Toronto well the Foreign Affairs Minister Christian Vreeland as we heard uh, from Lorenda did speak moments after al Kanun arrived here's a bit more uh, of what she had to say so as Canada, as the Prime Minister said yesterday, uh, UNHCR, uh, after speaking with Rahaf, after considering her situation, uh, gave her refugee status. And then the task before UNHCR was to find asylum for her, UNHCR did feel that she was in a dangerous situation and so UNHCR was looking very urgently uh, for a place 
where she could find asylum. Uh, we were involved in those conversations, as were other countries, and Canada was glad that we were able to act quickly and to offer refuge to a refugee at the request of UNHCR and to offer refuge to a person whose life was in danger. The Foreign Affairs Minister Christian Freeland at Pearson International just in the last hour. Well, let's stay on this right now because joining us at this moment in time is Lauren LaRose. She is with the UN Refugee Agency in Canada, the UNHCR. She's at Pearson right now and saw the whole scene unfold. Lauren, hello to you. Hello, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. You know, Lord, I want to begin with a point that was raised by the minister in the clip that we just ran for Canadians across the country. Uh, Christia Freeland saying that the UNHCR really feared for her safety. I, I, please tell us uh, about that point. Why were you so concerned? Why was the agency so concerned for Rahaf? Well, obviously, as we saw with the world, um, there was a lot of visibility when it came to Rahaf's case in particular when it comes to emergency cases like Rahaf, um, we have mechanisms in place to be able to fast track her um, uh, her placement in a, a safe third country. And so um, we didn't want to, to, to waste any time and clearly took swift action in, with the cooperation of, um, of governments. And we are so grateful that we, with the Part, you know the, the support of both the Thai and the Canadian governments that we were able to bring her here safely. What is it about her story, though, that that had the UNHCR fast track her refugee status? Well, as I'm sure you know, Michael, the, there are instances where, when there are concerns, um, where, where where there are um, priorities, high priorities, where there are immediate life-threatening situations, we act quite swiftly to ensure that we can um, resettle and place individuals who might be at risk in a safe third country. There's also um, um, a, a, something called non refoulement where if um, there is a potential risk, um, uh, it's an international pr principle that essentially prevents states from expelling or returning people to a place where their life or freedom would be threatened. Obviously, this is something that was raised with concern in this particular case, and UNHCR, in partnership with our um, uh, with our, our, our government partners, was able to move swiftly and um, bring her safely here to Canada. Safely into Canada, but walk us through now, Lauren. What happens with Rahaf? What does the resettlement process look like for her now? Well, every individual case is so different, and it's really difficult to give a timeline in her case. And obviously, um, there is the, the issue of, as well of, uh, um, you know, ensuring the, the, the protection and confidentiality of individual cases. So um, we would, wouldn't be able to comment on the details of any individual cases, and that would include Rahaf. But again, just to reiterate, it's going to be different and uh, on a different timeline for every individual. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, many Canadians want to hear from Rahaf because her story really has captured uh, Canadians in the past week. Uh, she did not speak today, but I'm wondering if you have any sense at all of how she's doing right now. Well, I didn't have an opportunity to speak with her half personally, but saw her comments through the gates with Minister Freeland. Um, but you can imagine she had a very long journey. Um, it must be a little bit tired, but she did manage a, a smile. And, um, uh, you know, it was just great to see her here. And in terms of next steps, um, I think she's just going to take the next few days to probably rest and recoup. She's been through quite an ordeal. And then um, hopefully we might be able to hear from her um, uh, in the coming days. But obviously that all has to be done on her terms. And UNHCR stands ready to support in any way that we can.